Alright, it's time for another math. Easy solution. Turn to discuss further into integrals and volumes, and now go over um, an example on finding the volume using integrals. And I'll go over this example, which is show that the volume of a sphere of radius r is volume equals 4 divided by 3 times pi r cubed. And you're probably familiar with this equation. Now, when solving this, the first thing I'm going to do is actually just draw the sphere in a, on the origin at the center is the origin of this x and y axis. So the sphere, of, let's say the radius is r, so from, from here, from the center to this is going to be r. From the center to the left side, this will just be, well, uh, negative r. It's moving to the opposite direction. And now if we were to, yeah, basically the radius is also r at everywhere. So if we were to look at this cross-sectional area, because like I showed in my earlier video, you just have to find a function of the cross-sectional area. So we'll, if you draw a line like this, this is also R. And now if we draw perpendicular line, I mean uh, just a line coming down from this, this is just a Y point. So at this point we'll have X and Y, and this is the value X right there. So in this, this region right here, this area, the radius of this area, we'll call this A of X, the radius is Y. So the area of this one is going to be, well, we know the area of a circle. This is just a circle. That's going to be pi times Y squared, or pi R squared. Now, we also know that this is just a regular triangle. This is actually a straight down here. It's a right angle there, perpendicular. So that's just the area of a triangle. This is going to be Y. This is X. This is R. And we know that um, x squared, we're using Pythagoras' theorem, x squared plus y squared equals r squared. You can see the proof for this in the video link below. Basically, when we have this, and now we could solve for y, y is, is squared is equal to r squared minus x squared. y is equal to, well, plus or minus square root of r squared minus x squared. And in this case, we won't even actually need to use this. I'll show you why, because we have this y squared. So if we were to take the area of this, we know from the definition of volume, I mean, that it take the volume, we know from the definition of volume, you, we just have to go from left of, uh, basically from negative r to r. This is our new a to b. So basically, we go from the leftmost of the, of the shape to the rightmost, and then we take the integral of this cross-sectional area that changes with uh, a changing y. So we put that in, so this is a of x dx. Now this equals to negative r to r of, now this area is gonna be, well, pi y squared dx. And now we know that y squared is, is right over here. That's just r squared minus x squared. So it's already squared for us, so we don't have to deal with this plus uh, or minus uh, square root sign there. So we just plug that in. We'll just put this actually here equals to negative r, r of pi times r squared minus x squared dx. So now we have it as a function of x right there. And now we can just take the integral. But first we'll just yeah, take the pi out. So we'll just have pi integral from r negative r to r of negative r squared x squared dx. Now if we take the integral of this, we'll have it take the pi out. This would be basically, now the integral of this is is actually r squared integral of just r squared. That's just the constant, so we just put an x times x. Now this one is minus integral of this is x cubed divided by 3 because derivative. 3 goes down, 3 is cancel, you minus 1 on top to make it a 2. So that's right there. So now this is from negative r to r. Now we plug those values in, we get a pi, it's pi is on the outside of, plug this uh, r inside, that's just going to be r cubed, minus r cubed divided by 3. And now this is going to be subtracted by when we plug this one in. Negative r inside this x, that's going to be a negative r cubed. There's a square there minus, plug this one in, that's a negative x, x cubed, I mean negative r cubed, it's going to be negative r cubed, but there's negative already, so we plus this, so it would be two negatives cancel, so it's going to be r cubed divided by three, in the second bracket there, and always just subtract, keep simplifying this, this is going to be pi, 
And now this is going to be uh, we have basically r cubed. This is going to be positive, well, negative r th over 3 plus r cubed minus this is going to be r cubed over 3. Simplifying this, we get yeah, we get basically pi, this r cubes add up, so we two r cubed, and now minus, this is uh, negative two r cubed over three. Now this one we can just multiply by three and three at the top and bottom to get the same common denominator, so we can add these up. That's gonna be six, then this is minus two. So we get basically pi, six minus two, uh, and yet six minus two, they're both gonna be, well, r, cubed on, is on the outside, the common denominator, I just skipped a lot of uh, steps there, I'll just uh, quickly erase this, this will just be 6, just to make it easier for you guys, 6r cubed, 2r cubed, all divided by 3, oops, all divided by 3, and that just becomes pi, this subtracts 4r uh, cubed, divided by 3, or written just a bit nicer, pi, I mean 4 over 3, pi r cubed, and there is our answer. Yeah, and this is basically what we're all familiar to, and that's, that's pretty neat how we can solve this using uh, calculus and integrals. Yeah, so now if we had, let's say, r equals to 1, or a sphere with radius 1, then the volume is equal to 4 over 3, pi times 1 cubed, that's just going to be 1, that's just going to be 4 pi over 3, and you plug this into the calculator, we'll get something like 4.18879, so something like that. And uh, and now, just to go over what, uh, basically go over our, our definition, which I derived in my last video on volume. Uh, volume is roughly equal to, well, this is going to be the integral, of, or I mean the summation of of many separate volumes, so up to n. So this is roughly equal to this, where the volume is basically the limit as it approaches to infinity. Of we have a of x i times it by dx, and in our case we have summation i equals one of n up to n. Now this is going to be well pi, and now we have our radius. This is in this case is actually. It's actually going to be just 1 squared minus, well, xi squared dx. That's in our case where this is just r squared, like I showed earlier, where y squared equals 2 r squared minus x squared. So this is the same example we're working with still. So if we have this right here, and if we were to sum this up, if we had, yeah, if we had, uh, actually I just copy pasted these two, these three graphs from my calculus book. If you had, in this case, you have 1, 2, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, so this is a 5 disks or n equals to 5, now the volume would actually be equal to 4.2726, if you were to calculate this, basically sum this up using n up to 5 right here, and now in this case there's actually 10, so n equals to 10 or 10 disks, plug this, uh, yeah, to solve this, uh, the summations, you're going to get a volume of 4.2097. Now, in this case, as you can see, it's getting more and more cl yeah, basically closer to the sphere with less and less errors. This is at n equals to 20. And our volume, if you were to solve this, this is actually 4.1940. So, as you can see, it's getting closer and closer to our 4.1888. Seven nine. So as you go to infinity, you basically get yeah. As n goes to infinity, you get closer and closer, and then get this, which is the exact volume. And that's basically when we would go limit as n approaches infinity to get the exact volume. This is just approximate as you increase. Anyways, that's all for today. Hopefully, you learned from this example. Like always, you can download these exact notes in the link below and stay tuned for another math easy solution.